Hello, thank you for joining me. You can see where I am. I'm at Gospel Oak. I've just come on the North London line from Wilson Junction, so that way's looking towards Wilson Junction and Richmond, and that way's looking towards Stratford. We'll get a better view once the Class 378 has departed. We've come here today because we're going to do the Goblin Line. See, it says trains to Barking. Well, if they go beyond Barking now, to Barking Riverside. So, as the train departs, we're going to wait for our train to come in here. So this is what's known as the Goblin Line, as in Gospel Oak to Barking. But last week they extended it by one more stop to Barking Riverside, and that's what we've come to do today. There goes the Class 378. So now that's gone, we'll just have a quick look at the North London Line. So the line curves that way towards Camden, and then it curves again and heads east. And then if you look that way, you can see that way goes towards Wilson Junction. We're kind of at the bottom corner of Hampstead Heath here. So this line, I've seen quite a few changes on this line because when I was old enough to travel by train on my own, this was class 150s on this line when it was all part of what was the Silverlink Metro and they used to use class 313s on this line. Then the 150s were replaced by class 172s which then went to West Midlands Railway so you can ride them still in the Birmingham area. In fact, some of the X-150s um, that worked on this have now gone to Northern. I was at Bolton Station in early 2020 and I saw a Class 150 still in the London Midlands colours coming in. So we're just waiting now for our train. In fact, it's funny, on the dot matrix indicator, it says the train has arrived. It hasn't. <laughs> but it does say Barking Riverside. Oh yeah, here we are. So this is one of the, the new trains which now work the Gospel Oak to Barking line since it's been electrified. Although when it was electrified, I did once travel on this line on a Class 378, but shortened to four cars, because I think you can only fit four cars on this line. So the train's going to pull in. We're going to ride our way right through to the other end. Incidentally, those lines there, there, that's the freight connection. I did once do that on a rail tour, but it's fairly rare for passenger haulage. And there's a train coming in. That's going to Richmond. See, so we have two different types of London Overground EMU. So we're going to go on 7110265 to Barking Riverside. So we've arrived at Barking, we saw a couple of interesting things on the way, it's a C2C train. We, gospel to Barking trains used to terminate at the platform right over the other side of the station, but that's now effectively become a siding, so if you're a track yes, basher and you haven't done that siding, then um, I don't know when your next opportunity is going to be, but we're now on the line towards next Shoebury station, Ness. Barking next station is Barking Riverside. So I've never been beyond Barking on a London Overground train before, and you've also got the district line to Upminster. The C2C line straight ahead to Shubriness. Yeah, sorry, I said this was going to Shubriness. Technically, it does, but this is the long way via Tilbury. And a good train is just going past on that side. I missed a good train for looking out on this, but I saw quite a few other good trains on the way. So that's the London Tilbury and South End line. Now we're heading down here. This good train we see has probably come from Ripple Lane. There's um, a big freight yard. Now, just before the freight yard, we take this new branch. So I've done this bit of track before, but very soon. I'm going to get a new bit of track that I haven't been on. The flyover will begin very shortly, and then the whole of this new line is on flyover. So it's always exciting doing a new line. The last new line I did in London was obviously the Elizabeth line. If you're interested, have a look at the Nicholas Street screen now. Um, this is much shorter but completely different. Whilst that was mainly underground, this is London overground. So we're currently still on existing track. I have done all of this. In fact, when I first ever did this line, I did this on the Hastings unit, Hastings 101, quite a few years ago. So um, that was quite exciting. Quite rare to probably do this on anything other than a C2C unit. So it's a good, it's more than a mile, I'd say, away from marking where the, it 
begins. There is talk they might put another intermediate station on it as a car transporter wagon. Uh, it's just before, well, this is becoming a railway yard. What was a Class 66 there? Class 66 112. So, this is all part, I think, is part of the Ripple Lane complex. There's another Class 66 up here, so it's quite good for railway enthusiasts. You used to have to go to Dagenham Dock if you want to see any trains and then come back. You know, I was 66169 idling away. Ah, now, this looks like, I think, yes, we're on the not on the fly over here, we're on the new bits of track. I think the C2C lines, the ones over there, this looks like new overhead electrification. There's another class 66, 66 number 30. So, yeah, good bit of line for railway views. Yeah, look, we're now on the new track, so you can see the new track laid into concrete. And if you just look ahead, you can just see the viaducts curving away. So we now cross over the C2C line. Cross over to this side. Have a look. So all of this was Ripple Lane Yard, I believe. Yeah, look, there is still container terminals down there. That's probably where that container train came from. We saw. Um, yeah, because when you go on the C2C line, you, they go either side of the yard, and now we're on the entirely new bit of track. You can see the viaduct snaking away ahead of us, and um, it looked like over there they built a new country park. So at the moment, all of what you see looks like waste ground. It's all a big ground, brownfield site, it's all been regenerated. There'll be lots of new homes, probably a bit like what you can see on that side of the trains. At the moment, the train's fairly quiet. Obviously, I'm not quite the only person on it, but in a few years' time, this will probably become quite a busy train. People will use this to commute into London. So imagine flats and houses built all along there. In the distance over there, you can probably see some smaller tower blocks. I think that's possibly Thamesmead, which is on the other side of the River Thames. Well, my intention is, because it's called Barking Riverside, to go and have a look at the river itself. So we're just coming into the station now, it's a bit of a dead end. What would be really cool is if they could one day extend it over the Thames, but I don't know if that'll happen, but that'd be quite exciting. There's a college there, Riverside Campus, so yeah, the term Riverside is very much. Yeah, I can just see the Thames over there. I see some development is clearly going on here. So. So this is obviously a winning station for me, winning bit of track. When I come back, I'm not sure if I'll get to do the crossover, but um, there's obviously a crossover there, it depends. When I come back, I'll try and get a train out the other platform, and I'm not too worried about the crossover. Um, so we're just coming out, I'm in the last carriage, so when we get out, we'll be able to walk down the whole train and have a look. If you look out over there, yeah, you get a good view now of the Thames. You can see industrial ships in it, or well, maybe you can't, but well, I can see industrial ships. The camera may not be picking them out, but they are there. So this view, you actually get quite a good view from the station, but all of this will disappear when they build houses. You won't be able to see quite so far. So let's get off and have a look around this new station. So I'm filming this video today um, on, what is it? It's Wednesday, the 26th of July, the station opened on that really really hot day when there was a heat wave um, and everyone was advised not to travel so I couldn't travel I, I happened to be down in the south so I went to the Isle of Wight that day so if you want to see that have a look at link on screen now so let's have a look so this is the train we've just arrived on one seven one ten two six five that's the view you get out over there so you can see the river ships in the distance you can see some incinerators and then over there that's all the other side of the river. Let's have a look through here. Can we get out? So this is an emergency exit. Oh, there's a train just departing for Gospel Oak. 256. Looks like some sort of um, large electricity substation up there. Well, you've arrived at Barking Riverside. What else can we see down here? So, there's obviously bus routes come this way because I can see a bus down there. And from the end of the platform here, it gives us a chance to see the viaduct stretching off back towards Barking. I think possibly in the future there's talk of the DLR being extended here, and I can just see an aeroplane landing at City Airport. I don't know if the camera's picking it out. I expect it may happen that the DLR gets extended here. I think uh, something will happen. 
whether it would be great if they did extend this over the river, whether they will, my thought is it might have to be some sort of lifting bridge if they were to extend it because you might not get the big ships underneath at the level we're at because we're not exactly that high above ground now. Let's have a look at the architecture from the station. Look at that, it's very quite an impressive building. It's kind of semi inside and semi outside. It's quite windy up here, nice and cool. It's not too hot today, it's about probably about 20 degrees, 19 degrees. Um, so that's why I didn't come here. I could have come here last Tuesday, but that was that day that was the hottest day we've ever had and I didn't come here. That's a new design of seats I've got. I didn't come here on that day because I just thought, you know, well, we were told not to travel and I think it would have been, an, in fact, I don't actually think any trains ran that day. I think trains ran on the opening day and then everything began to go wrong. So the trains effectively stopped running. If you get to here, so if you arrive and get, catch a train, it's raining, you can wait in here. Although thinking about it, would you ever actually need to sit on these seats? Because it looks as though there's always a train here. There's a train here now. And as we saw, there was already a train when we arrived. So I think these seats are a little bit pointless, although I suppose it could be useful if there were times of disruption and you know there were no trains here, then you may need to use those seats. Now let's have a look around this. So the way out the station says lifts over there. There's um, the steps going down. From this end of the station, we get a really good view out over the river. I can see a boat in the distance. Let's have a walk around here. So it almost looks like it's not out of the question that the line could go further, whether this will always be the terminus. I think probably what will happen is there will be another station on this line. I don't think this will always be the end of the line. I think that will happen. So we'll just come around there. So there's the lifts. We'll go down the, the stairs to find our way out. So yeah, platform, so that's platform one, that's platform two, trains to Gospel Oak, which is where we came from. Now let's go and have a look. Stairs to way out, and see there, it's embossed, so if you were partially sighted, you'd be able to find your way out. So that's all quite good. And um, yes, yeah, so there's two sets of lifts. So if you go on the lifts, they go right down beyond there. So I'll just find out where the lifts come out, because I'm, you know, inquisitive, like to have a look around. See concrete one. They're interested in those tiles. They look like, um, look a bit like uh, some sort of chocolate, but obviously they're not. And um, yeah, they're just sort of lightweight concrete tiles, I think. Reminds me a bit of obviously when we did come here to look around um, when we came to London to do the Elizabeth line on its opening day. Although it's not quite the same. It's on a similar kind of fairly grand scale, although you couldn't put an Elizabeth line train in this platform because it would be way too short. I wonder if a loco haul train will ever come up here. You might get, you know, one day you might get um, something like, say, a network rail test train coming up. I doubt a rail tour would ever come up because um, it'd have to be a short rail tour. That's the bottom of the lift. Ahead of us is the gate line. Um, so what we'll do, we'll go through the gate line, we'll go and have a look around the outside. So here we are, we're on the outside of the gate line at Barkin Riverside. Interestingly, see how the ticket machines are actually set into the wall. Normally they're sort of forward because they've been put in afterwards because this is built in with things like that in mind. So we come out here, so it says Barking Riverside, and there's that substation, pylons. So this is some sort of drop-off zone here. Maybe a buses will, it's a bit funny that little bit of road junction. Let's go through to the other side. There's not much to see out there. So we walk back through the station. So I walk past. I always think ticket barriers, you know, when they're brand new and they've got no, you know, they're not worn out, they, they sort of look, they, they come to look a bit tatty quite soon, but they don't yet. So there's the, I don't think there's a ticket office as such, which says assistant. As I said, development parking Riverside. And there's also in here, it says cycle parking. So let's have a look. What on earth are they? So now in the cycle parking thing, why, why is there, turnstiles, do they work? Right, anyone watching? Why is there turnstiles? They work, and they go both ways. That is really strange. Why are there turnstile style? Obviously not a ticket barrier. Not many bikes, I expect eventually this will be full with bikes. There's what, three, four bikes in here now. So I've done them all, I'm going to the third one. Why are there turnstiles here? That is the 
oddest thing I've ever come across. Is this door open? This door opens. So, um, yeah, that is weird. I don't even know how I'm supposed to be doing that, but that's interesting. Right. Oh, yeah, look, officially opened by the Mayor of London, July 2022. I wonder if they didn't put the date, because the date, it kind of opened, it didn't really open because of the heat waves they've just put July. That's interesting. Anyway, um, no doubt, I think all I have to do is come here again, maybe, in a few years' time, and just compare the difference. Well, that's interesting. Get a view of the outside of the station with its you know, overall roof. That's the train we came in on. I think that's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to come here again in a few years' time and just have a look, see how it's changed, because it clearly is not always going to be like this. But that's what I find fascinating about visiting new stations. I'll tell you another place it does remind me a little bit of um, is Bride's Glen. And that's the end of one of the Lewis tram lines in Dublin. The tram station is a bit like this. It ends here, except there, the development never happened. So when you get to Bride's Glen, what I notice is you get people who live beyond there, in say places like Bray, you see cars waiting to pick people up and, they, and people do ride the tram to the end of the line. Um, but the interesting thing is when you get on the tram in Dublin, uh, it says um, this tram is for Cherrywood. Um, it doesn't say, and, and Cherrywood's the penultimate stop. And I said to drive one day, I said, why do they say it's for Cherrywood? when Cherrywood isn't the end. And I asked him this at Bride's Glen, he said, well, have a look around, what do you see? I said, nothing, you go, but there's your answer. So um, it just does remind me a little bit of that, but it seems, look, look at all those cranes, the development is happening. This path seems to be a bit endless. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep walking, I'm gonna go and find River Thames. So as well as the station, Barking Riverside is the brand name for this huge development. That was that what seemingly seemed like an endless path we just walked along and there's the station. So all of this view we see here is a temporary view. You know, buildings are going to crop up all here. You might just get that view. I'm not sure what's going to go on here. You can see there's sort of, um, there's a few planters around. Um, so it'll probably be quite pleasant when it is all done. There's obviously going to be building done here. What's this about? This is another strange thing. Look at this. There's a, a temporary bridge. But why is there a temporary bridge here? Should we go over it and have a look? It doesn't, yeah, I don't think they've just painted it. Why have they built a temporary bridge here over nothing? Anyone watching know the answer? Let's go to the station. If you know why there's a random temporary bridge, look, and it is a bridge, it's not just a ramp, it appears to serve no purpose, look. Why, why is there this temporary bridge? What's this for? For a strange, it's a funny place. This they've had mystery turnstiles, mystery temporary bridges. Um, yeah, what's all this about? Right, it says footpath 47. I think if we get down footpath 47, we might find River Thames. And again, there's that view. It's training the other platform of Barking Riverside. You can clearly see the work going on. I can just see the city over there and Shard in the different distance. Let's go down here because the Thames is now in front of us. And um, what else have we got here? There's all these containers. This is Barking Riverside, Project Office. So, as we know, it's a big development. And, I, you know, I am interested to see this development develop. Oh, look, there's the Thames. So we've kind of reached the Riverside at Riverside. In the distance, I can just see the QE2 bridge. I don't know if the camera will pick that out. Well, it's like it might be a cafe or something. That's quite nice. Um, What's here? So, again, they're probably going to develop there. I want to know at least get to the river, and I feel like I've reached the riverside at Barking Riverside. I did a few years ago walk along, yeah, I, I think it was along there. When I did the London Loop, which um, one day I'll do into a series of videos on, I went by train to Erith, and I think I walked that section's London Loop. Um, and as I said, I could spot Thamesmead when I was on the train, which Thamesmead is more over at Abbey Wood, where, of course, the Elizabeth Line goes to. So, I think we've reached the riverside at Barking Riverside. Oh, over there is your other route into London, but it's peak time only. The Thames Clippers go there. They're building new ones, I think, on the Isle of Wight, or some new boats. So, that's something we can do. Right, I'm... Um, can I go down here? I'm, I'm not going to go down there. It looks a bit dangerous. Um, so, 
here we are we've reached the river thames at barking riverside i hope you enjoyed this video thank you very much for watching please do feel free to like subscribe and comment if you want to come do this yourself it's very easy you can just get your tra get the train to barking and do this nice little branch i'm going to make my way back to the station and ride the train back to barking so thank you very much goodbye